Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Zip Me Live broadcast of the W2L Team Time Trial. This is number 82. We have 822 teams, 5,000 racers, 100 countries with 10 zones, plus the Platinum League, which we are broadcasting now for you. Today, we will be doing the Vienna Espresso as well as Frappes for the coverage. We may have uh, one special... <laughs> a quick little jump over between that as well in the middle of that. But uh, we're Tempest Fugit here, 37 kilometers, two laps. going to be very, very fast out there today. We've already had some racers out on course uh, earlier today, setting some top times in zone one, two, and three. Currently uh, in the Vienna, is a 53-31 from the Cryogen Blue Jays. Just a quick shout out there, 45-31. Wow, Sar so Sars the Pro's Closet went out this morning already, Dave. In the espresso, oh, did they really? Enough, yeah. So that'll be a tough one to beat. Um, and then also a forty-eight fifteen. They're from Evil Warlords earlier today, and then Eat Dirt Two with uh, fifty-one forty-five uh, in the lattes, and then Eat Dirt Hex are holding out with the fifty-seven nineteen uh, over thirty-seven. So it's a longer day out on course. You know, thirty-seven kilometers flat, but uh, a flat course. But you know, regardless of how flat it is. The, it's still going to be a little bit longer than what these racers are used to, I think. Yeah, this one really reminds me of what a team uh, pursuit would be like. As uh, I just saw our friend Chloe Digert had a big signing with Canyon SRAM. That's really exciting. Speaking of team pursuit, she's one of the best in the world. Well, she would love this course today. Actually, this would be perfect for her. 37K, but it's going to come down to precision. Uh, so the courses that we've been racing on, uh, also in the ZRL, we've seen some very challenging courses. I mean, we did Richmond UCI Worlds course. That's a ridiculously hard. So this lets us get back to really what is pure team time trialing. We're going to eliminate a little bit of that, the sharp razor's edge of, of what a climber would be about and get down to what pure time Time trialing is Nathan. The times are going to be quick. Uh, Tempest Fugit, one of the first events. I'm sure that uh, this is not laser etched in your memory, my good friend. Nathan has done. You know, he's into that ten thousand races. But when I first started, this was one of the first courses that we were out on. I ride on this course all the time, Nathan. And uh, Tempest Fugit. I remember looking this up a while ago. Means time flies. That's the Latin translation. And uh, I hope you're flying out there today. Because, uh, yeah, you want time to go slowly and you to go like a rocket ship. So, all right, Nathan. I believe we're in with the Frappes as well today. You did say we're going to take a special peek into uh, One Rider's World, and I really appreciate you doing that. Super cool. And I think, Nathan, that really helps define what Zif Swift community is all about. We have all of our different categories. We have all of the different zones. But you're in the right place at the right time. We're locked and loaded. It's Platinum League. Yeah, we're on the Platinum League. Now, we are going to jump on in with the Espressos uh, very quickly here. We do have, it looks like, uh, our 3R team out on course. First ones to go. So let's go ahead and head on down. We also got our splits starting to pop in here as well. Uh, in just a few moments, our splits today are going to be at, I just need to bring that up here real quick, uh, 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, and 30 kilometers on the day. So... Uh, be on the watch Perfect. out for those. We'll make sure to be bringing those on in. So we're in with our three R boys uh, at the front end of the Espresso. They were the first ones to go, so they were the lowest seated then on the day. Uh, we're seeing Perkins here leading things out at a 5.3 watts per kilometer. Now, this is a course that I'm pretty familiar with. Um, well, I think a lot of people are familiar with this section, of course, specifically around TTTs. It is used a lot specifically because it is the flattest section of the world of Zwift that you can find for the longest period of time. Uh, the other thing about this, uh, it was made, uh, and this is right from uh, John Mayfield uh, when, I, when I went to visit out there. Part of the idea here was to make a TTT course. The idea was to create a course that was an out and back at a perfect distance that you could do a time trial on. Um, so uh, I think that's, you know, obviously it's been almost naturally started to be used that way by a lot in the community, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, but solid, uh, solid pace here at 46 kilometers per hour, though. I think they're going to need a little bit more here. Uh, you know, for me, on this course, 
if I'm if my team is going below fifty, I'm not expecting an invite back to the Premier League on this uh, on a lot of these flatter sections. You know, the forty eight to fifty, that's the like minimum for me. And if I can go higher than that, we're excelling because throughout the entirety of the race, it's going to be very difficult to um, to bring back any of that time. There's a little bit of a bump here. This is really the only bump you'll be able to find out there uh, amongst the Oasis here. That's fairly significant. It does get into a little bit of a two percent jumping in to that is very important to make sure the speeds stay high and then over the top of that carrying speed uh, will benefit the group greatly. John Mayfield, what a name. Is there many people, Nathan, who've had more of an impact in your life than John Mayfield? John is the guy who conceptualized Swift. I'm going to say around 2012, 2013, he was living in Austin, Texas. Uh, I mean, he's still around. He's part of the Swift family and really is – uh, I would have to say a cornerstone without any doubt is he is and Eric Min took this thing to a whole nother level really quickly. But John is the guy that really had the first conceptualization. Now there, there were other things out there, but nobody did quite what Swift has done. And I think you'd agree with me, uh, Nathan, John Mayfield is a really cool person too. I, I genuinely enjoy what he's all about. And he's, he's a, a younger guy as well. I guess that makes sense. Is this all really? When did you first get on Zwift, Nathan, as we're looking right now at R3R, getting into the first uh, 6K? 2015 or so? Is that when you first found it? Uh, yeah, 2015 beta invite came out. Num user number 3002 is what I've got for an ID. Uh, nowhere near to as cool as the guy who has, I think it's number, it's in the single digits. I think I want to say Simon's got a... Five or right? something Simon or something. Schofield? Simon, yeah, Simon Schofield's got one of the, a single <laughs> digit and yet does not have the bike that we will not mention. I do not understand how this is working here, Simon, <laughs> if you're watching. But come on now, buddy. Uh, anyway, well, so. maybe Simon's like me because Nathan. Every morning when I get on Zwift, I ride here. I head out to uh, that's yeah, the this problem. Part he doesn't like to climb. <laughs> yeah, that's the well, problem. you only get about 14 meters of climbing if you ride for an hour at 30k, right? It's I don't think he ever signed up for the challenge. I think he just <laughs> never hit the challenge button. So, I mean, <laughs> it don't matter how much climbing he does. He just it's never gonna happen. That that ship has sailed. He says. So uh, we're jumping in. We're still in here though with uh, R3R. Let's go ahead and move our way through the espresso category. We've so got Finger here from Pedal Power. Pedal Power making it interesting to see this was a team from last week that uh had jumped onto our radar here i think a newly not a newly formed team but a team that's back into um the world of well maybe a newly formed at the top level i recognize the name pedal power um definitely a name that i'm super familiar with from way back in the day but interesting enough definitely some uh names here i wouldn't be expecting to be here so a pickup here with austin feld i'm seeing neil austin feld wally's here as well in his evo kit so i wonder what's happening Patrick here if this is wally. a conglomerate yeah. now this has to be a new team is what I'm thinking, Nathan. Um, yeah, or there's some, some guest riding. I would assume guest riding yeah. right, with Wally. Because, I mean, Evoke, I'm well, not sure that anybody's jumping off of Evoke anytime soon. But I wouldn't want to no, assume too much. I agree. I agree with that. It's interesting. But one thing's for sure is the guest riders took them to a whole nother level very quickly as getting into the Platinum League. So let's explain that very quickly here. The teams that you're looking at, uh, in most cases, you're going to see 10 teams that uh, will be racing in the Platinum League. That's based on their time last week. So, And every week is the same. You're only as good as your last WTRL. And we're into the 82nd week in a row. 5,000 riders, over 800 teams. This is a worldwide movement. And we've, we've definitely established the popularity. And now we're really starting to see uh well today is going to be a really good example of the teams that are becoming team time trialing experts here taking the master class because i would guess nathan remember how close uh, the last few weeks we've seen you know five teams in the zrl within 15 seconds of each other at the finish on a on a really complicated hard course today expect to see very very close times uh, we could see uh, you know your top three times within five seconds of each other as a matter of fact, that is not an outlandish prediction. No, not at all. We've had it so incredibly close. We've seen it even closer within hundreds of a second once or twice, which was 
uh, I mean, over 37K, if we get it that close, though, today, it's going to be, it just shows how incredibly razor edge it is at the very, very top level, that's for sure. Guys, um, Nathan, they're carrying the speed that you were looking for here. I saw, well, it, it's coming down a little bit right now. They're getting right back on top of it here, but that's kind yeah, of the so, neighborhood that you're talking about. Yeah, and did you see it go 47 for a second there? That would be frustration for me as a team leader. If I was a DS... I would be telling them, okay, did you see what your avatar did differently? Don't think so much about the power. Think about what your avatar is doing at the right times with the right speed and the right momentum. And so I would be really encouraging them never to allow that speed to come below 48 and always do whatever they can to have it increasing on the front if they can with the power they're bringing on through. Um, you know, so <clears throat> there's, there's just a whole lot of, now you do see it down to 47, there's a 1% gradient right there, but with that 1% descent there, right there, um, my, what I do through this section is I actually accelerate as much as I can. I actually start to push into six to seven if I'm as an A category racer to press 48 and then when you well, descend off of this what ends up happening is you get into 50s to 52s because you carry speed into a downhill you know think nathan if you're coming up on a water crossing right and uh, you want to get a little extra speed just to blast through it it's the same mindset isn't it you know just build exactly. up a little extra power get up and over the top of that pimple and then you'll be you know you feel like you're really <laughs> getting it done at that point uh, 100%. All right, let's go real quickly now, guys. Uh, I know you've been waiting for this moment right here. This is what it's all about every week. Nope. <laughs> and that is going to be our team uh, competition for the posters. And we've got two selections. Dave's selection on the week. Uh, it looks like Dave is going for the Dirty Chronicle. Uh, Dave, what, what's going on here, man? Come on, Stuart. Well, okay. Hold my wheel. I see what's happening. I see. A little bit of favoritism going on here with the Stuart Featherstone, perhaps. Absolutely. And you can see <laughs> Shut Up Pete coming from behind. <laughs> so Absolutely loving it. Doing, uh, so we're doing the best to keep up. Dirt <laughs> Diggler's setting a fast time for Dirty Afternoon Delight to Chase. I love how I the... Love uh, they compete against each other throughout the day as well, showing a little. It also highlights all the zones, you know. So yes. I, I, I it, uh, with that because they compete against each other within the same um, category, which is really cool to see. So that was the selection there coming in from Dave. I went ahead. Th I, this I absolutely love TFC Hurricane cool. Platinum League, and what I'm liking about it is the rhinos are there hanging out behind. Oh. The rhinos are wow. hanging out behind, yes. and then there's this guy. Like, off in the back. Is that Martin? I think that's supposed to be Martin getting dropped. <laughs> Just hanging out with his Swedish flag. I don't doing know. Doing this little Swedish. waving. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think what's going on there is something going, or, or you know, the hurricanes are dropping the rhinos, yeah. right? And then they're, they're yeah. also dropping uh, the, 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 the Swedish team off in the back there, which is, uh, it's, I'm losing the, the name well, for the. Tell me if I'm wrong, Nathan, but don't the rhinos look like they flopped over? <laughs> kind of yeah, yeah you know what definitely. i mean that's exactly I think that's a statement from tfc hurricane here that's what we're going to do to you guys today so i agree I keep agree. them up we love These the posters absolutely... yeah. okay so that's lost ketchup that's supposed to be lost ketchup back there i believe in the in the uh, mochas oh. that's supposed to be lost ketchup back there getting dropped so oh, okay we can't yep. hang on yeah great job there guys great job uh, and so, and you see how they all look like Eddie Merckx, right? They're just like looking. <laughs> yeah, they're all, yeah, they're all, yeah, they're all bad boys. Yeah, yeah they're <laughs> all the bad boys. Wow, while, while the rhinos and, and lost ketchup yes. are off the back, so uh, it's great. And the, the seeding this week, just so everybody knows, lost ketchup, who's supposedly off the back, they are the second seed, top seeded. Uh, TBR Z6 M1. I don't know. Maybe they didn't do the TBR because how are you going to do what? Maybe there could be a big ring. Maybe it's hidden. Is there a little Easter bun? Is there an Easter egg in there? No, no but, but TBR is the yeah. top. Then it's Lost Ketchup. Then it's TFC Hurricanes. Rhinos, they did beat last week. So that's the top four. So top competition there in the Mochas. Absolutely love what the Mochas are doing for us there. All right. So those are our po poster choices for this week. So get your best graphic designer on the team. Uh, get them involved. We love it. We're jumping in with Z Sun R. Now, this is a powerhouse squad. Nathan, uh, when you see this, this formation, this kit, they look like a group of geese in flight, don't they? 
just killing it. They might even be losing a rider right now. Now, so remembering we have 37K. You don't want to lose someone, but if they can't hang, they can't hang. Seven going at 50K per hour is better. No, he's coming back. That's good to see here. That's hard to do as well. So, all right, you can see that it's not easy out there. And Nathan, I'll be honest, uh, even riding with the pacer bots, that's been good for me for sure. But you, uh, you can see... So if I'm lucky enough to find a pro rider that I know and they're out on a recovery day, just trying to hold on to someone's wheel at 35, 37K per hour, if you take your take your foot, for me, anyways, that's not that's obviously really low for a lot of you guys. But uh, for me, anyways, if I try to text or take any kind of uh, my tension off of the my avatar for a moment, I end up letting a gap open up and then it's a nightmare. So focus is critical here. Uh coordination amongst your team communication all of these things come into play today but nathan i'm going to guess that today's not a day where you need to do as much talking it's more about just put your nose on the grindstone and get after it make watch baby yeah it really it really is there isn't really any holding back today which is a great tt course a lot of fun for me at least where you don't have to worry so much about uh, it, it's it's nice to have the tactics. It's nice to shine on certain days, but these days are fun because it's just about speed, you know. And you can really just focus in on the churning of that well-oiled engine that you have gotten together with your team. Whatever tactic you're bringing on the day, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. It's interesting, just actually. Like you know, some of the funnest um, gaming that I've done as well in MMOs has been with groups that have rated in that way, where it's like you just are you know, flying through different types of objectives over and over and over again with that rinse and repeat at the same kind of tactic that you know to use over and over again. And here adding in that high heart rate, the, uh, you know, that, that almost like uh, sport, sporting, aggressive sporting feel to it and the adrenaline and the endorphins are going, oh, it's so much fun. So I'm actually looking forward tonight to um, my go uh, tonight with the with this to see DDC? how things go. Yeah, no, oh, on the rivet now. It's on the rivet now. On the rivet? I, yeah, oh. on the rivet. So same team, different name. So we're jumping on in, and it's going to be a good go. We're going to be excited for that. So now, let we me got jump some in, time's Nathan, coming and... in. Time's are coming in here, yep, Dave. Let... Yeah, Red Giants, they're the team that we're with right now with the 12. So you're looking at the fastest team on course without any doubt about it. As a matter of fact, this is fascinating, Nathan. Look at the difference here, okay? The 1223 for Zeeson R, the Red Giants. Then... You've got four teams within five seconds, second, third, fourth, and fifth out on course. That's Ram Raiders at, at 36, 39 for pedal power. Another team we were just talking about, 1239 is the time for the Evo Extra Turbo Snails. So here's the question then, Nathan. Have the Red Giants gone out so hard that they're going to have trouble sustaining? I'm not saying they are or aren't. I don't know. To tell you the truth, that's why we have them actually race instead of just me talking about it, because these guys are going to have to back <laughs> this up now. Now, clearly, they're exceptional. This is a really good start to the race. They're a third of the way in. I, I wouldn't bet against them. That's for sure. As a matter of fact, the way this team looks right now, that is the platinum standard in the platinum league. And they're going to be hard to beat because trying to get back 16 seconds, there's no course features that you can try to use, right? This course is so simple. That makes it pure. Yeah, there is. I wonder, this will be interesting to see too on that respect, because uh, I have this theory that, that's developing on, on the whole Zwift side of things with racing where, um, it, it the way that the drag is experienced in game and uh, how the avatars function with speed and power might be a little bit. Uh, it's just interesting. Like it's always functioning on a a hill. You don't feel a hill. The hills are simulated, but you're always right. up against some sort of a drag in a certain way and different drag coefficients depending on if they ever change them in game. You know that's all that happens when you have an arrow power up, right? Your drag coefficient gets changed a little bit. Your your you know what how much it's pushing against you. So it'd be interesting to see like as riders slow down how much. Uh, you know, the speeds will change and how much differentiation there can be over different sections of the course. It'd be really interesting to see if they're able to bring back certain amounts of time. I'd have to agree with you. That's a huge gap, though, uh, for the rest of the riders that are down there. But we still have Priority T and P.O. Auto. And P.O. Auto have been, I, you know, I think they're not only getting their tactics together about how to race a TTT, I think that they're also really 
focused in on this Zwift season, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a monster ride from them as they come into the peak well, fitness for the second half of not only the Premier League, uh, but also into this WTL TTTs. I agree. I think you're going to see Nathan P. Otto will come in now. So they're our top seeded team, meaning they were the fastest squad last week. And I expect to see, I don't think they're going to go better than 1223. That's the team we're looking at right now. Zsan R, the Red Giants. I do think that they're going to be sub 12. 30 here. So slotting in right between the Raiders and the Red Giants is going to be my guess. Pio Auto is a well-drilled team. And now this is a course that, uh, uh, I mean, when you talk about does it suit anyone? Well, it what it suits are riders who are good at team time trialing here because this is a super unique discipline. The time here will be taken off of the fourth rider's wheel. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of teams finishing with six, seven riders actually today, Nathan. That's rare, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah, and Usually it is rare, and it's going to keep things really fast too, Dave, right? Because of the whole idea of that. Absolutely. Um, the whole idea of the blob effect, the snowball effect that is out there. So uh, we are looking at PCA tier UK RT. That's a lot of acronyms <laughs> in there. Plastic Cockneys <laughs> UK RT. I'm not sure what the RT is in for, in for there, but Ram Raiders, Ram... Uh, you're braver than I am. I wouldn't yeah, I even am. try I'm, on that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving a guess, giving a guess here, but they've got a good time here <laughs> so far. It looks like with that, they're sitting in top three right now, as of right now. Um, P.O. Otto, you were right coming in. Are they tied? Is that right? They are. There you go. Boom. So a little quicker than even I could imagine, but that's going to be the gold standard of 12, 23, at 10K. We'll check back in at 20K, Nathan, but there you go. We got ourselves a dogfight. Look at the times across the board. Ram Raiders, Vision, D-Pack, Cryo, RDT, 1239, Pedal Power, Extra Turbo Snake. I mean, this is crazy how... Holy cow. This is going to be so we close. Full house. So yeah, close. Look at this. We have... <laughs> We have three teams on 1236, three teams on 1239, and two teams on 1223. That's a that's a really unique board. A lot of well, symmetry you know, on that board right now. Play lotto. It's pure speed, right? Pure. It all is about yeah. pure speed, and you're just looking See, at. That's uh, what I was talking about. You're and right Nathan, on here's there, what's Dave. fast. Yeah, and here's what's fascinating to me, right now. In real life team time trials, the teams will set a schedule, right? Meaning we're going to ride, as you said. We're going to ride at 50K per hour. If we can't do that, we're not going to win. And uh, we came here to win, right? So you, it looks like that's kind of happening right here with these guys. Three of the guys are on board for riding at 49K per hour. Two more, a little bit of trouble right now. And uh, this is a team that we're looking at BRT that's down to five. So they can't mess around here. They'll get it back together. But that's not ideal with more than half the race ahead of you to be down to five guys because some of the other squads are still rolling with, well, the maximum number of riders that you could start with today and any day on the WRT. We're into the 82nd week. The, uh, the rules are uh, well known out out there but eight riders is the maximum got to finish again with four to get a time we're gonna christian mox in here taking a solid pull it looks like 5.9 watts per kilogram 48 kilometers per hour uh for him it's gonna be a tough day for you know with the type of speed course we have here too um it really matters having every single rider with you because of the blob effect, but also just the reality of how long your pulls can be, how long your rest can be then in between them. Think about, you know, that extra 30 seconds that you get for me, for us, it's 30 seconds. That was what we're, we've been doing on our polls. A lot of teams That's have swapped smart. to shorter like polls, that. you know, they've much mm -hmm. shorter polls. If you have eight riders, you can even make it 20 seconds because that I, I get to a point personally where if there's eight riders, I'm like, when do I get to go? I start getting bored. Like I start getting, I'm just sitting so here for Nathan, way too long. Go ahead. Well, yeah, you know, on that thought then. So what I would coach you guys, or, you know, obviously you don't need my help there. You guys are doing a great job. But what I would say is then, Nathan, why don't you try to do 30, 35 seconds while the other guys are doing 20? You know what I mean? I, I would just keep you in the in the wind a little bit longer because we've talked about that a lot. It's not about when the stronger riders, and, you know, that's fair to say, you're one of the stronger riders on the team. It's not about keeping uh, the speed faster when you're on the front. It's about you staying there longer, keeping the average speed higher. I think that's the first time I've put it that way, Nathan. It's not about spurts of going really fast for a moment. It's about keeping your average speed high. And that goes back to what you were saying earlier in this broadcast about setting that target. Today, 50 is a lofty goal, but I think that's what P.O. Auto is doing. I think that's what Zsun R is doing. So if you want to win a bike race, you've got to be crushing it out there. This team right now, uh, BRT, they're having a rough patch here, Nathan. 
it does look like they're having a rough patch. And it does come down to, I think, the fact, look, Christian's right back on the front. And I think it comes down to having five left and not enough rest time for some of the other riders at, over the threshold that they can possibly hold. I do believe that the team leaders here at this point are going to be <laughs> Moxon and Vandebosch. Exactly what you were saying. It's interesting, though, Hywell Davies struggling. I think Davies is trying to keep it together. I think he's trying to be the glue for everybody because Davies is a super strong rider. So I have a feeling that the other two riders, it's going to be Brooke as well as Van Ruten, that Davies is just trying to give him a wheel and make sure they hold on to Moxon's 5.4 watts per kilogram. They're just trying to keep it together here, I believe, uh, after maybe losing a rider or two or perhaps only able to show up with five on the day. It makes things very difficult to hold those really high speeds. We do see Vanderbush now making his way through. Now here comes Brooke. Maybe I might have been incorrect. He was just it. trying to weld it back together. Now up in the six. 0.6 watts per kilogram. Vanderbush now welding it together at seven there for just a moment. So, um, you know what? There is one tactic, Dave, and I'd have to agree that it's a tactic that does work. There's something that we're trying out, and I'm going to suggest tonight for those 20. If we have eight riders, I think 20 seconds bursting. Um, you know, if you can time the burst correctly, though, but it's very much of a, a gaming thing. It's very much knowing the avatars and the pictures, pixels, how they move, and knowing how to time those bursts well amongst each other. Um, you know, I don't know how many button smashers we actually have in, amongst the, <laughs> amongst the boys that I'm racing <laughs> with, but there is a reality of of of. I mean. The, the timing is so incredibly important where if you don't get it right with the avatar, and I think a lot of people for so long have only focused on the right-hand side watts per kilogram as well as the upper left-hand corner with the watts, and that's all they care about. Maybe the speed a little bit, and then just kick for the first one across the line for that, that um, friends list next to you. That's all they've really paid attention to maybe a little bit, or it's just all about third-person point of view, where am I sitting in the pack, and really getting it down to a um, tac tactile feel. You almost have to have where, you know, and I get into, you know, this sounds a little bit geeky, but when I'm playing Apex maybe for a few hours straight and I really get into a groove, you start to become like, one with the avatar that you're you start to kind of like your your yeah. your button smashing the mouse along with the keyboard starts to really become one with what's going on there well you hopefully after driving swift long enough and getting that pedal stroke and everything good enough you start to get that same feel so the timing then with 20 second first I, I, you know I, i'm kind of around a run on a little bit here but i really think there's something to that especially with eight riders like i said what is that you do the math and you're sitting around for almost two minutes and uh, in the middle of a TTT at four watts per kilogram, 4.5, you got so much more to give. And I think you're wasting nitro nitrous oxide that could be well, used on the front. Yeah. Good, really good point. Uh, so uh, in the usual suspects, there's a great line about the greatest trick the devil ever played was convincing the world. He didn't exist. Well, the greatest thing that Zwift ever did was convincing people or making you feel like you're playing a game while you're doing this, because this exercise that you're getting here, it's the very, very highest level. And Nathan, to be fair to your points, and I think these shots right here, that's what we were talking about John Mayfield earlier. How cool is that to see the teams coming back the other way out here on the course? And it, oh, I yeah, love that in cool. the event. Super mode, cool. Yeah, this is just rad to look at. Um, so Nathan, the guys on your team that maybe aren't as strong because on any eight rider team, there's going to be a variation in ability level. And so for the riders that are uh, having a little bit of trouble going at that pace, don't overdo it. Don't feel obligated to take a pull. If you're going to hit the front and bog the team down, just continue to stay in the draft and almost become a church mouse, right? It's okay. If you don't take pulls, just don't get dropped. So everybody's got their own perspective on what it's like out here, and I love it. In an eight-person team, uh, you're going to have riders that go through a bad patch at different times, and it's all about nursing those riders along. And again, let's look at the splits now. As we're going to jump in with the women here, and that's your fastest time at 13.18. Socks for Watch, the WRT version. Now They're back at it, Nathan. This is a world-class team, and they're having a world-class ride today. Is They've got a nice advantage over the Wonder Women, who've been phenomenal out here. See, so I race like a girl in it just three seconds behind the wonder women there so it's going to be interesting to see what we've got at 20k but uh <clears throat> this is not uh not a runaway yet but a very very strong start for socks for watch wrt and i can't say i'm surprised yeah gonna be a tough day to bring that back that's a good gap over the first yeah. uh little First little kick uh, of 10 kilometers. And being told from Michael Egan over in chat that Sarsa Pro's class it was also at a 1223 
uh, through 10K this morning. So it'll be interesting to see that time from Sarsa Pro's closet. Might be able to stick uh, up against Z Sun alongside of uh, that 1223 that came from PO Auto. And those are three of the top teams right now in the men's side of things. And the women's side of things, uh, these are some solid times coming on through. And that's a good call out there. Dave, obviously, with socks watch, but there's also the battle there going on between CSO I Race Like a Girl and Wonder Woman and Cryority T. They're all right up against each other with that 10 seconds. A little bit further down, Aero Unicorns, Choppers are out there, TFC Vixen, Aeonian RT, and CSU Do. We are looking at CSU Do here. They were the, um, uh, what seed were they out? I believe they were uh, looking through. They were the first ones to go out, so they're, they're trying to hold on. Okay. They're trying to hold on uh, to that spot in the Premier League here. As we do have nine women's teams out there. Uh, this is going to be TFC Vixen then. They've got a pretty solid time. It looked like they were at a 14-17 last time through. So they're battling out with CSU to hold on. Uh, Sox Watch Unicorn is beating them out by a few seconds as well as the Choppers are out on course trying to chase them down. And this is going to be the Choppers right behind Arrow uh unicorns here this is gonna be mckay baldy robinson thorvalson this is a solid team actually yeah you're gonna see very few teams catching the team in front of them or being caught by the team behind them as well again uh, so claire good i see in the middle of this team and leah thorvalson as you mentioned this is a really strong this is the second team i guess but when you look at it i wonder now, if they stacked well, I mean, it this yes. week dave i wonder it looks like they did they might be moving some talent around just having fun with that, Nathan, or, or trying to find the right fit for certain riders. But uh, this is a monster team, no doubt about it. Thank you. We're jumping in there with the Welsh rider. Good. As uh, you can see that this team is really, they've got some momentum going right now, motoring through. We're getting splits coming in. So there, yeah, there you go, 27.57, a little bit quicker for Sox for Watch Air Unicorns. But the fastest teams were the last teams to start. And, and there's no doubt that they're on a great day today when you talk about their compatriots or their sister team, the Sox for Watts WRT. As a matter of fact, they will be catching teams out there possibly today, Nathan. They might be one of the few teams to do that. So the times are just going to get faster and faster at 20K. Is there's your 2744, but uh, Sox for Watts WRT is going to be down into the mid 26, I would say. I wanted to real quickly here give a shout out. Uh, I got a great message coming on through the other day uh, from one of our Zwifters out here. And uh, it looks like maybe a couple of technical issues, though, coming f f through for the rider out here, which is too bad to see on the day. But he's still hammering through. Uh, and uh, it, was, it was a great message coming on. And he's hanging out in the uh, latte class, I believe. And this is going to be this Ken is McGinnis. Ken, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. Ken McGinnis. So Ryan for ATP, he ended up having a technical issue, it looks like, on the day out here today. Uh, but uh, Ken uh, has his, I think it's his grandsons in London, Dave. Yeah, Cosmo and Bruno, we appreciate you. As uh, your grandpa really loves the fact that you're able to watch on Zwift Community Live, and it means a lot to Nathan and I that you do. So uh, you keep up the great attitudes out there, guys, and uh, be super proud of uh, Grandpa Ken here as he's motoring. We need to see you know, a Nathan, meetup I, I, of Grandpa Ken and Cosmo and Bruno yeah. hanging out, doing their own little TTT uh, around Tempest Fiji. It would be a lot of fun as well. But uh, great oh to see Ken. Too bad we had that. Too bad that we had a, a little bit of a technical uh, difficulty for him on the day. But he says he's got ten to go, ten miles to go. He let me know. So uh, obviously coming from the US of A at uh, ATP. Uh, where's his team at though? Is what I want to know. He's in the, strong. In the board Nathan, here. Nathan, I thought you were going to say I should have a meetup with Grandpa Ken, and I'm going <laughs> to uh, bow out because I can't ride at 38K per hour like this. This guy is a monster. Yeah. So Cosmo and Bruno, I hope that you get the same DNA as Grandpa Ken. That's going to be really useful. That's <laughs> yeah, for ATP sure. Although, Nitrogen, they were sitting in seventh last time through, it looks like, too. So the team's still hammering on. They're having a good good ride, it looks like. So shout out to his team. 28-41 was the time they came on through. Losing Grandpa Ken seems to make him suffer a little bit. That's the only reason why, right? Grandpa Ken's yeah, out yeah. the mix. I so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nathan, do you mind that. if I take a look? Yeah, hey, thanks a lot for doing that. And uh, again, we love when you reach out and communicate with uh, us at Swift Community Live. So looks like we've got some splits to look at here coming in at 20K, 27.41. One was the fast time I saw oh, it. Oh, oh boy, thanks. Oh, hey, no worries. Ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Do the lattes. They deserve okay. it 100. 
Sure. Let me hit this one quickly. It's 2741, the fast time for Los Fernandes. 2747, so it's only six seconds. Nathan, this is going to be really close. We'll have to check back in on these guys out here. As uh, It's only six seconds back to Team ODZ, the Destroyers of Cookies, and then Team TFC Raptor at 2751. That's only 10. Oh, this is really close. Holy moly. Kirkmeyer E-Cycling, 2754, their time. So they're only 13 seconds out. Then just a couple more seconds back to two guys, Z-Nuts. I'm going to go through everybody here because we love having your rates with us on Zwift Community Live. The Lancets at 2806. The RR Woolly Rhinos with a 2813. And let's see who the Aero Press with us. And yeah, thanks to everybody for racing. That's going to be the latte class that we're looking at. We have a lot going on, but uh, now I think we're going to jump right in. I'll throw it back to you, Nathan, as you're getting some fast times coming in from the Frappes. Yeah, we're gonna, we'll jump in with the Frappes in just a moment. But here are the times that are coming on in for them. Uh, up at the top, it is going to be Innovation Alien Express hammering away with the 2546. There's a battle there, but a little bit ways out. Not sure the Vikings Fenrir are going to be able to catch them uh, with the time that they currently have um, on course there. Uh, but it's possible. It's possible, it's but possible. that's a pretty big gap yeah. over 10K. I agree. I agree. You know, if you, you do the math, right, that means you're going to need to go – uh, a little over a second faster per K to make the catch. And it's hard to eke out any extra speed right now. When you're flat out, baby, you're flat out. And I would say that that's where we're at right now. Again, in with uh, one of our women's teams in the Vienna category. Now the Aero Unicorn, Socks for Watts, has been another one of the really cool stories to watch develop, Nathan. Uh, empowering women. Uh, actually, uh, they look like they're just having an absolute blast. When you look at that team and the camaraderie, and that has, I would think, for a lot of people during the real bummer that has been the COVID era, this has been one bright spot. And I'm really happy that you found that. Yeah, and they're, uh, they're doing an uh, amazing job with Sox for Watts with those two teams. With Cry RDT, this is another team to be watching out for, that's for sure. The Rens are absolutely killing it the last couple of weeks, and they have been a team that have been on my radar to try and start to get into that Wonder Woman, I race like a girl. Yeah, they're close. They, you know, I, I, I've, just, I've always felt like they've right, been right on that edge, uh, especially with their performances in the Zwift Racing League, the cryo team amongst the women, they've been right there. Um, you know, it's it, it's been always right on the edge here, though, in this uh, TTT here. Uh, as we do see Klein here coming out of the Netherlands, Eichmann, and then it's going to be Paul, uh, as well as Thurman here out of Germany. So very international team, the Rens here. The cryo, the cryo yeah. has always been... Uh, very worldwide it's interesting that some of these teams that form through zwift that are only zwift centric it's you know so you have, you have teams that, yep. yeah exactly you have teams that show up and they were an in real life team and they bring their club and it's like you can tell like everybody's from one you know region which is great it's absolutely awesome and then you have teams that end up mixing up a little bit but it's mainly you know they one of them or two of them got on they found some buddies and then it kind of brought more people in though Throughout, if that makes sense, you know, and, and from the sure. club, and then it grew. But then you have teams like this. They one or two people just formed a team that was only a Zwift team, and next thing you know, you've got this. No, it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't. There's nothing to do with well, in real life in any way whatsoever, as far as associations go. And you end up with I, I love all the flag, the flags, and the ethnicities coming across the board. It's great to see. Um, every one of them are great, great, great representation every which way, but uh, it's something definitely new with online racing that you've never seen before. Yeah, there's over 400 folks that are part of the cryo family. Nathan, I'm hoping I can become the 401st. Actually, I'm trying to get my act together, and then I'm going to apply to get on the team because I love what cryo is all about. So they, uh, you'll see, we believe that every species known to man of birds has now been used as a team name <laughs> here. So, uh, you know, it's just really, really cool what they're doing. ODZ, Nathan, was one of the first, like, Zwift teams. Look at this formation right now. I'm going to turn my attention to the Wrens here because that is beautiful. Little gaps now. If we could tighten this up. So it's, uh, it's an interesting day of racing, and I, I don't want to delve too deep into it, but you, as Nathan has mentioned, there's different strategies for how you get down the road the very fastest it does depend on your your team setup the 
certainly a lot of metrics to look at, but I really like what the Reds are doing here right now. So, Nathan, I'm going to throw that one to you. First person view or third person? I know the answer because I've heard you mention it in previous well, shows. Which do you of, prefer? It depends. The- so here's the thing. So um, if I show up and I have a certain sensitivity on my mouth, I'm going to compare this to gaming, right? Okay, real quickly. And let's say I, I, I have a certain sensitivity on, on my mouse where my mouse makes the cursor go back and forth really quickly. And I like that, right? And I'm used to that. Well, I think it's similar to that where it's like, well, this is the sensitivity setting I like. I like a medium sensitivity setting. It helps with my aim. It helps with that. So if you're not used to it, and actually there is research that shows that across the board, the best esports players go with a lower to a medium and not a really high. It's very rare that a really high sensitivity is going to do well for aiming. And it's just a, it's, 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 it comes down to basic maths really and human, human interaction with, a, um, with, with reflexes. Well, I would say at the end of the day from my experience, so what I know, and this is nowhere near, we have not had enough time in this eSport to know this, that third person point of view, if you can do it, is the best. That's my, that's my, Could that's you? my opinion. That's my opinion what I am used to because, and there's reasons for it. There's definitely reasons for it. I think it's most responsive. You'll get the most energy saving. You'll see what's coming easier. You'll be able to grab onto wheels easier. Um, and I'm able to read the board next to me in a way that I know if somebody's uh, coming through or not. And if you can't read the board on the right, though, in a way that you can see where people are at, who's coming through and how, then a lot of people maybe are going to use uh, this point of view. I've seen people, you know, stars of pros closet talk about only using this point of view. So, Nathan, just for the point of uh, answering Fritz's question, so show us one. This is one. View. This is one. Right. Yep, and this then, is first. This is three. This is, th- this is third person point of view. Third person point of view. There's two of them, actually. So there's one that's a little closer, one and two. Three, I can't show you, actually, without actually being the person. So I cannot Not show you. you right. I can't show you so, th- uh, uh, the num- number three or first person point of view. But first person point of view is essentially your eyes are the avatar's at- eyes. So right, and right. that's so, essentially that in my opinion, that is the best if you can make it work. If you can make it work, it takes practice. So for those that are wondering, what are we talking about? Well, when you are on Zwift, when you're playing the game and out riding, you have it's eight different choices, right? For basically camera shots. You're like a producer of your own ride. You can choose, as Nathan said, you could be like you're looking through the eyeballs of your avatar, or you're looking from just behind your avatar, or you can look from the side of your avatar. Is it eight different view choices that you have, Nathan? Uh one. Something like two, that. It's three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, and then nine. So there's nine, nine different okay. choices that you can go from. But then you can also hit zero, and you can go all around with the – you can do all kinds of things if you hit zero. So you can Whoa, do a – you're going to give a, me a motion kick. sickness. <laughs> 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 so we're in with the Cryo RDT Rens, one, a team that really is showing you how to do it. They're putting on a clinic right now in time trialing. But there you go. I think I predicted into the low 26s or mid 26, a 26, 11. Holy cow. So socks so, for watching. I mean, I actually, back hey, on this is a great thing. one. This is a great one here, Dave. We actually have the man himself who came in and did, uh, who, they did a great review of this actually. And Matt, I don't mind one bit if you put the link in chat to the video, but he says first overhead and rear. And that is, so he's, you know, he's, he's going for all three point of views, depending on what he is doing at the time. They did a great little video right. of it. If you guys want to check that video out, um, I, I'm, I, I'm not exactly positive where the channel is at for it. It was a recent podcast, that video uh, video blog, excuse me, that they did. So go ahead and check that out if you want to. They, Stars of Pulse Closet put a couple of those videos together, and they're a top team, obviously, sitting in uh, first or second in the Premier League at this moment after this last week. I so enjoyed that. they obviously knew what they were doing. I'm a big fan of Matt, and I really enjoyed that. It's on YouTube. Easy place to go find it for sure. So, okay, these are your splits coming in at 20K. The next check is at 30K, and that's going to be seven kilometers before the finish. That's going to tell us, well, this tells us an awful lot. As the real bike race looks like Wonder Women, who have had some wins, they've been phenomenal, actually. I really have appreciated what the Wonder Women have done. As Nathan, they climbed that ladder, didn't they? Ascended from a, a middle-of-the-pack team to 
they became podium contenders. And then over the last couple of months, they've had some big, big wins. And they've beaten all comers, as they say. It's not like they showed up on a soft week. That's one of my big pet peeves when you hear someone say, yeah, well, she won the race, but it was a weak field. Well, it's not her fault how strong the field was. But to be <laughs> fair, Wonder Women has taken on some full-on fields here. A, a strong choppers team, socks for Watts, the, the full – nine yards so this team can do it when you talk about wonder women that's carly johan is the rider this is sisu isn't it that we're looking at if i remember correctly yeah this is sisu i race like a girl there Johann you go going to the back kessler there sitting and it looks like meredith and Wendell kessler. taking her way to the uh to the front legler's there so, as well so it's a solid team but not a lot of riders here only showing up with five is that not right? ideal so, gonna yeah. be a tough one so, solid 46 amongst the women 45 though good good speed though that they're carrying there's some uh, big-time triathletes on this team like Kessler. There's Catherine Curie, who is a rocket ship. But, uh, again, Catherine has an amazing spectrum of skills, but uh, climbing is maybe more her forte, but she does more than hold her own in a situation like this, a very, very strong rider. So this is a good example. If this team is sitting uh, in third place, almost a minute behind Sox for Watts, how good is Sox for Watts is really my takeaway there because Sisu is a great team. Uh, it's worth noting that uh, Meredith Kessler just did the Ironman triathlon that has been uh, I don't know if you saw the story of the young man, the 21-year-old Downs uh, syndrome uh, uh, person who finished the first ever triathlon, uh, uh, Ironman, I should say, not triathlon, but Ironman. It's been all over the news here in the United States, at least. It's been an incredible story. And um, Meredith was at that uh, Florida Ironman. So a lot of athletes that swift with us and ride in the team time trials are triathletes. There's Marina Arce. She races for Aeonian, and this is going to be Aeonian that we're looking at right now. This is a team that's come on strong, although I think maybe, Nathan, they've been focusing quite a bit on the ZRL. I don't think that WTRL, at least for the last uh, couple of weeks, has been where they put all of their their focus. That, that's a good call out, actually. And that is a reality that and it's, it's, a, it's a good problem to have. But esports has been getting so big that teams are having trouble fo finding where they're going to put their focus. And you're starting to get a situation where these teams are getting uh, enough riders, though, where, um, you know, in the world tour, you start to see something similar. Right. You start to see where, OK, this world tour race is going on that is a very high priority for our top tier or even a mixture of tier if you're if you can split your team up to be strong enough right and so um you start seeing different focuses where it's like okay we'll focus on the ttt wtrl then these riders are going to be the main ones coming off the bench for the zrl right or you can mix and match a little bit so and that's a good problem to have in the world of esports yeah. i think in some ways uh in, in some ways it, it does maybe start to burn teams out if they don't have enough riders but if you do start to grow and recruit you start to really get this um always racing the brand is always out there the trade team is always able to kind of put its feet in in, in the water throughout the week nathan we just saw aeonian have to uh, say goodbye to a rider at 30k so actually Timing isn't too bad there. That's Heinrich, the rider that I'm talking about, the German that just came out of the group. So she did a good job, to tell you the truth, took a pull and then left the team. That's uh, that's how you say goodbye uh, on, on the right foot. And we're going back in now. So this is an interesting look. See how many Hino riders there are here on this Sox for Watch. This is the fastest team in the world right now. we catch SZ here real quickly, though. SZ is just about to finish. I want to make sure that in the lattes, we are getting their, uh, them uh, a highlight and go through the lattes a little bit out here today. You bet. Uh, we've been all over the place. But lattes here, it looks like with their finish up, Gunga's here making his way to the front. There's a 6.6 .6 watts per kilogram into his final few. And this team here... Uh, the times are coming through a little bit slower today, it looks like. Let's see if we can get looks some like an updating issue. Yeah. Yeah, no yeah. No worries. For sure. Right. Uh, I, so there's scheduled updates. Sitting, though? Where are they sitting? And this is going to be uh, SZ on the latte side of things. And I'm looking for. Interesting. Through. I don't see them in the 12 teams here. Yeah, correct. We'll have to wait and see if we can find them out there. Are, is um, SZ possibly in the Frappe? Perhaps. Oh, good call. Good call. My bad. We're supposed to be on Frappes. That's why, because Nathan's just messing everything up there. 
So there's two. Hey, there's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, I understand. This is Brindley of the Rowan King Gazelles that we're looking at now. This is an all-star team coming out of a lot of Welsh riders, but out of the United Kingdom. And they're there. Actually, I saw they were just about to finish. That would have been Las Raps, Raspidos, I believe, are the team that we were we were uh, acknowledging there for a moment. I would believe for the S uh, for the SZs as uh, Las Ketchup, Rapidos. Las Rapidos, that they've kind of got this uh, uh, Hispanic uh, Spanish thing <laughs> vibe. Going on, yeah, even though, the, even I, though I they're all. Hard. Even though they're all you know Swedish, they say, I don't know why they're why they're stealing here. What's going on, guys? No. You know, around the world, it's known you want a good burrito, go to Stockholm, Sweden. That's where you'll find Are it. you kidding me? Is that for real? I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm like, I don't have think you even, that Swedes have you been do there? Mexican food have well. You... <laughs> <laughs> they're not you known for Mexican baited food. Baited Nathan on that one. Yeah. You baited me on that one. Good there, Dave. You got me. Yeah, well, I got you. Yeah, you know what? I said it with my serious voice. Right. It's a, a lot of the delivery. I love this. So, Nathan, here we go. Some of our frappe times are coming in. But remembering here that twenty six thirty or excuse me, twenty six eleven is. Oh, no, I am wrong. I see a couple down into the twenty fives here. INC. Oh, INC Alien Express is having a fantastic ride. Twenty five forty six. That's going to be 11 seconds faster than Viking spin here. And that was at 20 K. So it actually we're going to see them not that far off actually uh, we'll get a time from them as they will have gone past there uh well or maybe not but they're certainly that's the ride of the day that we're looking at from inc alien express here in the frappe division we use the coffee categories here 